Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I manage a vertically integrated projects team called Retrofuturistic Hardware, Music, Gaming, and Computing. Basically, this is a general umbrella for stuff that I personally think is cool. Students are encouraged to sign up for a VIP team over multiple semesters. So new students joining the team can learn things from students who have been on the team for a while. I'm making this video about project ideas for new students to check out before our first in-person meeting, but I'm going to post this publicly in case other people are interested. And if you have some ideas that you think would be cool for my students to work on, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm just going to spit out some random ideas in no particular order. The NEC PCFX is an obscure game console that was only released in Japan. It was released in the mid-90s and competed, although unsuccessfully competed, I should say, with the original PlayStation. I have a PCFX GA, which is a plug-in card for the NEC PC98 series of Dawson Windows machines. And importantly, NEC created an SDK for it called GMaker that allowed end users to write games for it. And last semester, we were able to actually get some custom code compiled and running for it. One of my previous VIP students, who is a native Japanese speaker, spent a lot of time translating the documentation from Japanese into English. So we can write some games. I'm obsessed with the Owned Martineau. This is one of the earliest electronic music instruments. Johnny Greenwood of the band Radiohead, who's also composed quite a few movie soundtracks, is a big fan of it. I would like to build a musical controller based on the owned Martineau. I'm not particularly worried about the sound generating mechanism. We can use various modular synthesis modules for that. What I'm interested in is this continuous pitch control mechanism where you move a string up and down by moving this ring that you place your finger in up and down. Now, the Ode Martineau also typically has a highly distinctive keyboard. I think it would be cool to build one of those too. But the main thing I'm interested in is the sliding mechanism. I'm also interested in creating this key mechanism that the player uses their left hand with that controls the volume. I have a book on the Ode Martineau with various diagrams that will help us in our quest. And now for something completely different. Okay, so this is a project, a student in my vertically integrated projects team has been working on. It's written in the Godot game engine. It includes this fancy inventory system where you can drag things over for various inventory items. There's a crafting system where you can craft things with various recipes. Anyway, the student who is working on that is continuing this fall semester. Maybe you would like to join him in working on this project, or maybe a different game in Godot. This is a 2D game. I'm particularly interested in maybe spinning off a second team that explores the 3D capabilities of Godot. For some context, I teach a class called GPU Programming for Video Games, and I've used Unity in that class for the past, oh, I don't know, since 2014, something like that. For a variety of reasons, I'm interested in checking out game engines that aren't Unity. So I would love to have some students checking out some of the following game engines. The Flax engine looks closest to Unity in overall general vibe. It's pretty much a one-person project. It is a commercial game engine, although it is source available, meaning that the source is on GitHub. But if you use the engine in your game and you make more than a certain amount of money, you have to pay something, something, something. I don't know. You can look up the details. Like with Unity, there's versions of the editor for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The Wokash podcast did a really interesting interview with the lead author. The Stride engine also caught my eye. Like Unity and Flax, it's built around C Sharp. This one is particularly interesting since I think at its base, it's similar to Monogame, which itself is similar to Microsoft's original XNA. Unfortunately, I think the editor only runs on Windows, 
I might be interested to see if we could port that to the Mac. But I think the games themselves will run cross-platform. Another engine I would like to check out is O3DE. Again, I think the editor only runs on Windows. But again, I think it would be cool to see if we could port that to the Mac. But I think the games themselves can be compiled for different platforms. O3DE is basically an open source fork of what was Amazon's Lumberyard engine, which itself was a fork of Crytek's CryEngine. And it looks like it's made some significant progress. I started to think about the importance of controlling your source code when I heard Jeff Vogel of Spiderweb Software talk about it in an interview. So I want to know why on earth are you making your own engines? For your games? A lot, lot of moving parts to that question. First of all, I, I want the source code. I'm in, this, I'm in this for 30, 40 years. I must control the source code so that I can port it to the new computers so that I can remaster it, so I can do this, so that I can do that. So if you have the ability to create the source code, hold on, create and hold onto the source code, that is enormous financial advantage over the long term. I was thinking about this trend of remastered games. If you make a game in Unity and then 10 years later, want to remaster that game for a new console, who knows if Unity will even still be around then. If you have access to the source code, it may be a heavy lift, but you have a chance of porting it to a new console. I'm also interested in exploring alternatives to C and C++. I would love to have some students check out the Odin programming language. It's been proven in some special effects kind of production software. So you can check this out. And the creator of Odin, who goes by the name Gingerbill, is an interesting guy. Also really want to check out the Beef programming language. The IDE runs only on Windows, but you can actually build the compiler for other platforms. Now, I would be interested to see if we could port that IDE to other platforms. That could be cool. The syntax of Beef has a C-sharp vibe, but it seems to be designed to be a lower level language, closer to C++ in terms of speed and memory handling. And it's the passion project of a co-founder of PopCap Games. Okay, another gear shift. For years now, I've had students building bits of a modular synthesizer, actually a whole bunch of different modular synthesizers in a variety of different formats. So if you're interested in learning to solder, learning how to lay out circuit boards, learning how to do the front panel wiring, which is really a big part of the work that we have to do. If you're interested in designing front panels and fabricating those front panels, all that kind of stuff, this is for you. On the software side of music, I have students working on synthesizer and effects plugins for digital audio workstation software using Juice. Juice is a C++ framework for making such things. So this is particularly good if you either have C++ experience or want to get some C++ experience. I'm also interested in developing modules for something called Voltage Modular. This is something like VCV Rack, but it's a commercial program by Cherry Audio. Even though it's commercial, you can get started with it for free. And in particular, there's Voltage Module Designer that lets you develop modules using a Java framework. I made this Chevy Chev Wave Shaper module using Voltage Modular. I think it's really cool. I would also like to check out Hyze. This is described as the open source toolkit for building virtual instruments and audio effects. So I think this sort of has the same sort of vibe as Juice but it's something that's higher level, although you can write code for it. It's not all just drag and drop. Over the years, students on the VIP team have developed a lot of custom arcade controllers. So if that's your kind of thing, let me know. In particular, I think it might be cool to make some controllers like those used in the original Space War game. They don't look very practical from a modern standpoint, but they have a vibe. Thomas Tilly has a great website talking about his work along these lines. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Retcom 87 project. I shouldn't forget that. This is a project built around 
the microcontroller called the W5C265, in particular a development board for it called the SXB. The microcontroller is built around the 65816 architecture. That's the 16-bit extension of the classic 8-bit 6502 processor that's used in Apple's and Atari's and Commodore 64's and a whole bunch of stuff. The 816 architecture is most known for being used in the Apple II GS and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And I developed some boards for this that added the ability to talk to game controllers and to play sound and to do video using the same chip used in the ColecoVision and the Texas Instruments 99.4a. And I had a student who wrote a fourth interpreter compiler for it and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, imagine you're like Steve Wozniak in your garage in the 1970s. On a related matter, I would really love for some folks to become familiar with how MAME, this arcade and console simulation software works. It's modular, so you can use different modules associated with different kinds of graphics chips and sound chips and CPUs, and then you define files that indicate how the memory mapping works. And in particular, I'd be interested in using MAME to emulate that developing RETCOM 87 computer. I'm also interested in exploring the VERSE programming language. It's being developed by Epic Games and is currently a scripting language in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Although the thing to remember is that Epic uses Fortnite as its proving grounds for new tech. This is going to wind up in Unreal 6 at some point. And there is some serious intellectual heft behind this new programming language. If you take a look at the author list here, okay, we have Simon Peyton Jones. That's sort of your main developer of Haskell nowadays. Guy Steele, who did the Scheme and Java programming languages. Wow. I have some students that are designing and building guitar pedals. That's always fun. I have many more ideas, but it's 6 a.m. and I should go to bed. The last thing I'll mention is that I'm obsessed with classic role-playing games. <laughs>